Manuel's Fun Family. I'm here on the Noonan Division where I'm here with 3478 Lambots. Winners of the Bayou Regional. They have a wonderful robot this year with lovely intake, climber, trap mechanism, and some programming stuff that we're going to talk about on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, we're going to start off our interview talking to Sophia, who's going to go over the general robot process and our intake and stuff like that. Well, first of all, we have a uh, sort of ripe train on here with Krakens. And then we have the first subsystem that is the intake on here with PVC tube and these wheels. Um, then we have another roller on here to the transfer from the intake to the shooter. This is PVC tube with cat tongue and this is like more grippy in order to eat the note. Then we have on here the shooter with a nail and an encoder to the angle with the compliant and on here some colton to the spin. The note We have some top sensors on here to know where is the note and also a top sensor in here to detect the note and then shoot it. Well, very interesting, very cool. Let's move on over to Diego who's going to talk to us a little bit about your trap mechanism and your climber. Diego? Uh, well, first off with the climber, we have here two hooks powered by a nail. And we have two uh, independent hooks because uh, we figured out that it's possible that we climb uh, a little bit sideways. So each one has its sensors and it like looks how it's climbing. And if it's climbing a little bit sideways, it corrects all with programming and it, it's stable. Uh, it hooks its attached to the chain and it can go all the way up to so that we can climb very easily. We have some modifications here. Uh, this hook was a little bit more to the front, but uh, because of the weight of the robot, we decided to move it a little bit backwards so that we could climb more easily and the robot will face the trap. Uh, we also have in the shooter, it's in the elevator that we use not also for the trap, but for the amp system. Uh, we have different positions for the trap. First, the well, the hooks goes up. Then we lower them a little bit. Then the elevator goes up and it takes different angles so that it's easier for us to climb. This is the final angle of the shooter, and we speed the notes in that position. It also uh, the notes lights with this little metal thing. Um, it's like it slides through the trap and it goes in basically. Well, very cool, very interesting bot. Uh, but let's move over to Tail, who's going to explain the entire design process for your robot. Okay, so uh, to begin with, we first thought about like the, the dimensions of the robot. So, first, we have like a uh, 
27.5 by 3 inches on the chassis without bumpers. And then we started prototyping, uh, doing a lot of shooters at home and all of that. And then we separate our team by mechanisms. So there was someone that designed the hangers, the shooter, and all of that. So then we combined them all together into the robot. So first in the intake, we first had uh, one big, we have one big roller here. Uh, first we had cats on, and then we decided to use this type of wheels and later on put the uh, tatong on the other rollers so we had the best uh, grip with this then we go to the transfer we have uh, the we have the movement of the shooter doing this so the transfer can go very easily and we have our uh, hopper, let's call it like that. There are the first four rollers here that are separate from the shooter. Then on the shooter, we have these compliant wheels, and these colsons here, so we can have spin on the note, uh, so it doesn't wobble wow that much on the air. Then we have the elevator to make the trap, at the same time that in the uh, and the uh, hooks. So now in the hooks, is, we had a problem first that the center of mass of our robot was pretty balanced, but then we found out that we wanted more to go forward, to lean forward. So we put the center of the hook a little bit backwards to give us more of that tilt we wanted. Well, very cool, very interesting uh, robot you've got here. But let's get over to Pau, who's going to talk to us about some of the programming stuff that y'all are working on. Well, for this robot, the most important part, I believe, is the odometry. We have two limelights, one on each side of the robot, and we use them for updating our odometry using the tags that are on the field. Uh, the odometry is really important because with it, we can adjust both the angle of our shooter and the angle of our robot to always shoot more precisely. And we also use it for the autonomous period in which we tell our robot to go to a certain point on the field. And it's more precise than using the encoders of the motors. Well, for the game pieces, which are the notes, as Sofia said, we had three distance sensors for correcting the piece and always having it in the same position. And well, we also use magnetic limit switches for having a security when we climb so it doesn't break. We have also more securities on the code which help us to have the piece in the same place. Well, 3478, very amazing robot that you have here, Lambot. We wish you the best and can't wait to see what you do on here on Newton. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.